Hi, my name is Anthony Resinello. I'm a social and relationship coach. I've been doing this since 2005. And today I have been asked to react to the situation regarding Fedmeister and offline TV. In this video, I'll be reacting to Lily Pichu. If you have not yet seen any of the previous videos, as this is the third, I recommend you get started by clicking above. Let's go. The past few days, a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of sadness. Um, I feel like I've been mind fucked. I feel like, like my friends are telling me one thing, the internet's telling me the other thing. I should never read comments, by the way. It's a very bad habit. Um, another group of people telling me something else. A lot of conflicting things. And I, I've been feeling like, what do I believe? What do I believe in? Etc. Um, and I took down the original tweet because people were downplaying it. Like, it was just cuddling. I didn't say no. I just wanted to ruin careers. And that felt really, really bad. Cause I, it's a problem I have where I minimize a lot of things and I do it for years. And when I came public with it and people were minimizing it again, it just felt like my world was crashing down. So that's why initially, okay. Um, and I'm very thankful that Scar spoke up because it felt like a lot of people were trivializing it. And sometimes I am too big of a, I think pushover. So I just believe people. And <laughs> here's Kara. Um, I think sometimes people look down on us like, oh, this is just high school drama. Or TV are all high schoolers, etc. Despite the fact that I think this issue is very serious. And like how Scar is the most mature one. So is Toast and Michael, but not the girls. But let's say, let's go with that narrative. So if Scar, Toast, Michael, and Steven all tell me repeatedly that I didn't do anything wrong, that I'm not a bad person, then honestly, I want to believe them instead of random people on the internet. I think like that was the logical conclusion I came to, right? When I think about what Fed did, um, okay, so I didn't think it was bad at all. And I still have trouble believing it was bad. But again, if Scar, if Toast, if Michael, if the people around me who care about me, people I trust, tell me like that wasn't right, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to want to believe them, right? Or, or I'm surrounded by psychopaths who all lie to me, and there's no hope for us. But hopefully, that's not the case. I think they are very trustworthy people, and I have to believe them, right? Or, yeah, they're just we're just all fucking sociopath psychopaths, and like no one tells the truth, and <laughs> all this shit, whatever. Um. Yvonne wanted to include it, so yes, uh, of course I'm going to let her include my account and include my own perspective of it. And I wondered if I did it, like I thought of future Lily, like what kind of person would I be if I didn't validate her experiences and help her? And it was a tough situation. I was so torn. I care about both Fed and Yvonne a lot and I'm still struggling with like a lot of guilt. A lot of, lot of guilt. And I know Yvonne is too. And I'm just, I hope that will pass. Um, I reached out to Fed yesterday. And I also reached out to him a few days ago when it happened. And just to make sure he was okay. And he told me he wanted to be held accountable. And that he was playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> and I laughed because... That's, he doesn't fucking like Animal Crossing, and I'm like, man, you must be bored. And then I cried. <laughs> but it was like really nice to see him doing things, even if it's like playing Animal Crossing. I mean, you just never ever see this in any uh, similar situations. You could, I mean, for me, I just see the just pureness and love coming from Lily to the point where, first of all, I don't even know what happened with her and Fed. However, she acknowledges that something bad happened with him and her together. And she still feels guilty for it happening. But even further, she wishes for the best for Fed to the point where she contacts him, hoping that he's okay. 
If that doesn't tell you that she's somebody that should be taken seriously when she actually do does speak her truth, then I don't know what is. If that doesn't tell you that she is completely non-biased to the situation, I don't know what is. If he needs help, like, you know, I said I'd be here because I still struggle with a lot of guilt with that because we all really, really, really loved him. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, anyway, moving on. Well, I was thinking of this last night and up till very late. And I did reach a conclusion out of this shitstorm that's happening to us or whatever. Um, everyone is a real person dealing with real situations and no matter what position you have right now whether you're part of it you're a viewer you comment on it you search it up you make videos on it you stream it you upload retweet whatever honestly we're all just fucking degenerates together and no one is better we're all shit but like we're trying not to be shit and uh life goes on it is what it is uh that's actually the conclusion I came across. I'm like, dude, I don't know. It's right. So I, I think the one lesson I took out of this is I'm going to trust my friends a lot more than, uh, yeah, I'm going to trust Scar. I'm going to trust Toast, Michael, Steven. I should believe them when they tell me things, right? Instead of being like, no, you're wrong guys are just saying that I'm a terrible person, etc. Like, it doesn't help anyone. And I think it's just more productive to believe in them instead of believing in, like, a tiny portion of the internet or whatever. You know? <sighs> Alright, so... I guess Lily's main story is in her statement. I didn't know that she had put out a statement, so I'm gonna read that too. All right, so it was actually pretty hard to find, but I was able to read the statement made by Lily Pichu about Fed. And again, a lot of what the stories are about Fed in isolation don't sound like the worst thing in the world, but it's when you start stacking it up, the fact that he is secretly doing this to each woman in the group in the house not telling anyone else is when it starts becoming toxic also i just want to get specific about what happened with him and lily now basically she said he came in one night drunk asked if she wanted a massage she said sure he started massaging her from the feet up to the upper thighs he came in Again, another week drunk and expressed his interest in her. Now, coming in one night and drunk and expressing your interest in a girl is not the worst thing in the world. It's not even a bad thing to do. Um, asking if a woman wants a massage and then massaging her, a lot of, in a lot of cases, it's not a horrible thing to do as long as you could plainly see that she is willing and actually excited about it. But when you know that that woman just got out of a really bad breakup and is still coming out of that, is still learning to find her confidence again and trying to hook up with her or trying to get physical intimate with her at that time that's when it starts to be a bad thing that's when it's obvious that you are doing this because you are trying to find a back door way into hooking up with a woman again i can't say this enough this is the behavior of an insecure man a man that does not believe he is worthy of love from a woman. So he must find different ways to get sexual with her, 
to have a power play with her. Um, if you've noticed, one thing that he does often is he does it when he's drunk. Does this mean that he has drinking problems? Yes, but what does it really mean? It means that he uses drinking as his way to feel more confident around the women that he might be interested in. But if I can give a piece of advice to men when they say, all right, well, how the hell do I let a girl know that I'm interested? How do I do it when we are just friends? And Anthony, you talk about making friends with women from the start all the time. I always mention, it's very important to mention, as soon as you feel interest in a woman, as soon as you feel your attraction, let it be known. This is not something that you strong arm. This is not something that you hide for months. You also don't do it when you're drunk and then jumping in her bed without warning in the middle of the night. When you feel your attraction, you express it. And you do it early on. You make sure that the dynamic between you and her is clear from the start. A lot of people may think, oh, but doesn't this take like the excitement away? I don't think so. I think it makes it even more exciting when you express your intentions from the moment that you feel them. But guess what? Your intentions might be, hey, you know what? I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't know what the future is between us but I just wanna let you know I'm feeling attracted to you. Or your intentions may be that you want to be in a relationship with her. Whatever it is, express that. Do not hide how you feel. This is what a confident person does. An insecure person hides their true intentions and hopes eventually they could somehow sneak it in. Somehow it happens long down the road without her even knowing it. That is not the way to confidently start a relationship or even get intimate with anybody. Now, I don't know exactly how Lily Pichu really feels about her situation with Fed uh, when it happened, the time where he came in and he massaged her. Um, I don't know if she feels negatively about that. I don't know if she feels violated about that situation. But the one thing that is apparent is that Lily is such a caring, kind person that she still wants to keep a friendship with Fed. She still wishes the best for him. But regardless of how she feels, about him, it's important to acknowledge that what he did is not the way to go about it ever. And men, I just wanna let you know, you might be pleasantly surprised if you express your attraction for women from the moment that you feel it, how they respond. Actually, I just had a client tell me this week because I told him the week before, I want you to express your intentions with the woman that you're seeing. Tell her what you want from this relationship. And what did he want? He said, listen, you're gonna be moving to France in a couple of months, so I don't know where this is gonna go, but I'm really attracted to you right now and I just wanna keep it casual. And he was scared that he was gonna get rejected. He was scared that she was gonna get pissed off about that. She was right on board. She was right on the same wavelength as he was. She just wanted to keep it casual. She knew that it wasn't going to be a long-term thing, but it was important that he expressed his intentions from the start. He expressed what he wanted from that relationship. The worst thing is to go into a relationship under the guise of something else. Right? So go into a relationship as just friends without any intention for it going into an intimate place and then later down the line, surprise her with it out of nowhere. 
that is the wrong way to go. I know that it feels like the safer way, but it's not. It's much safer to express your intentions from the beginning and to do it, especially not when you're drunk late at night while she's in bed, probably not the best time to do it also. So again, as always, I hope the men have learned a little bit in this video and I really admire every woman that is able to come forward and make a statement about situations like this because as we could plainly see, a lot of people are gonna bring them down because of it. So this was part three. I hope you stay around for part four where I'm gonna cover several people's statements. See you then. <laughs>